Welcome to Food and Nutrition in Service. Today's topic is the diabetic diet doesn't exist. Today we will be covering identifying carbohydrate foods, recognizing the macronutrients that affect blood sugar, describing the average carbohydrate intake, and identifying a healthy diet for a person with diabetes. Now it is a common thought that people with diabetes are on their own special diet and that that diet is specific to them. Now, this might include changes like no regular soda, only diet is allowed, no sugar, only Splenda, sweet and low are equal, only sugar-free items are allowed, and of course, no cake, cookies, pie, or other desserts. You may also hear things like tomatoes, carrots, peas, corn, and sweet potatoes are not allowed because they're sweet. And the diabetics can't have fried foods, or salt, or bread, and absolutely no white foods. And if it tastes good, you can't have it. So let's just break that myth right now. There is no food a person with diabetes cannot have. They just have a different way that they choose their foods. So let's do an ultra quick nutrition review. There are three main macronutrients, protein, fat, and carbohydrates. Now these are calorie containing nutrients, unlike vitamins or minerals, which do not contain calories. Now in ideal conditions, protein is used for fixing and replacing the actual tissues in the body. So muscles, connective tissue, hair, skin, and basically your whole actual physical body. Now fat is used as a resting energy source and chemically as a backbone for building things like hormones. Very important stuff. And carbs, of course, are the main fuel source for your body. Now, in not so ideal conditions like starvation, all three of our macronutrients can be used as fuel, but of course it's not always ideal. Protein for fuel means muscle breakdown, rhabdomyolysis, excess nitrogen, hard on kidneys, bad time. Fat for energy means ketosis, which isn't always a bad thing, but of course that's a conversation for another time. Suffice it to say that bodies like carbohydrates for fuel. Sometimes a little too much, but I digress. So the main focus is carbohydrates, right? So what foods are we talking about? What foods contain carbs? If we step back very broadly, every part of your plate contains carbohydrates, to a certain extent. Even the meat sources contain a very scant amount of carbohydrates. Now that's found in the glycogen stores within the muscle itself. But if you think way back to physiology, this makes sense. That's how your muscles store short-term energy. However, this is such a small amount that for our purposes, it doesn't matter. In general, the main carbohydrate sources in the diet are grains, fruit, non-starchy vegetables, starchy vegetables, and milk. So let's look at this a little closer. So here are all our carb-containing foods laid out in order of carb density. Starting on the low end, we have our caveat of non-starchy vegetables. Things like broccoli, green beans, lettuce, tomatoes, cucumbers, carrots, yellow squash, zucchini, asparagus, onions, celery, and many others fall into this category. These kinds of vegetables only contain 5 grams of carbohydrates per serving. A serving being a half a cup cooked or one cup raw. Now that may sound like a lot, but believe me, no one is eating enough vegetables for it to count towards significant carbs. Next we have milk. Now I don't mean plant milks like almond, soy, and rice that people are making such a fuss about nowadays. The nutrition on those vary a lot. I mean plain old fluid milk that comes out of a cow. No flavors or sugar. That milk contains 12 grams of carbohydrates per eight ounce or one cup serving. The next two have about the same amount of carbs per serving. So in no particular order, next is fruit. One small piece of fruit, which is about half a cup, is about 15 grams of carbohydrates. This is what will fit in the palm of your hand. This includes things like grapes, peaches, pineapple, and oranges. The exception here is banana. I mean, honestly, the bananas you see in the store these days are huge. A banana has about 30 grams of carbs. So to get about the same amount of carbs you would get from a small apple, the serving would be half a banana. Next is starchy vegetables. These are things like potatoes, corn, beans, peas, winter squash, like butternut, 
parsnips, pumpkin, and sweet potatoes. You can identify these by the texture and density. Starchy vegetables are more hefty, dense, and dry than our non-starchy vegetables. That is simply because they have more starch and less water. And what is starch? Carbs. Fun fact, starch is the storage form of carbohydrates in plants. So the same way that we store glucose energy in our muscles as glycogen, plants store their energy in their plant parts as starch. One half cup serving of starchy vegetables is about 15 grams of carbohydrates. And of course, last is grains. Oh, our dear friend bread. But also pasta and crackers, tortillas, buns, bagels, muffins, rice, oatmeal, cornmeal, quinoa, grits, and all our other delicious grain friends. Compare all these to a slice of bread. One slice of bread is about 15 grams of carbohydrates. For things like rice, imagine that you smooshed up that piece of bread in your hand. The volume you would have left over after you squished out all the air would be a little less than half a cup. For grains that you eat all by themselves, like rice or oatmeal, a half cup serving is about 15 grams of carbs. So let's put everything into perspective. A serving doesn't necessarily mean that's how much you should eat. Now, if it's spaghetti night, you may end up having three to four servings of pasta, and that's totally okay. The average person needs about 200 to 250 grams of carbs per day. That's about 12 to 18 servings of carb-containing foods from all of the foods we just talked about. Four of those being pasta isn't a bad thing. Now for our friends with diabetes, this number may be slightly different, and usually it is lower, especially with type 2. But those needs are individualized. That's a great question for a dietitian. Their needs are usually in the 150 to 250 gram range on average, but that will definitely be different for every person and every individual case of diabetes. To make counting carbohydrates easier, a system has been developed to count carbs efficiently and thankfully, you all use it every day. Carbohydrate choices can make it easier for our friends with diabetes to track their intake a little better. One choice is equal to 15 grams of carbohydrates. So for example, one cup of milk, or a handful of grapes, or half a cup of broccoli, or one slice of bread. Here would be an example meal plan. The carbs are spread reasonably evenly throughout the day and end up totaling about 180 grams of carbs. Easy enough for patients, the choice counts are listed on our menu. Depending on their individual carbohydrate needs, the amount of choices they have per meal varies between three and five. Quick caveat, non-starchy vegetables are free foods by hospital standards, but in the real world, if a person was eating three choices of non-starchy vegetables, it would count as one carb choice. What they choose doesn't necessarily matter from the menu. As in this case, a carb is a carb when it comes to blood sugar control. For our purposes, fat and protein have no effect on blood sugar. So a person could eat 20 pieces of bacon and it wouldn't raise their blood sugar a single bit. Probably not a good idea, but you guys get the point. The goal with diabetes is distribution. An average daily intake of carbohydrates should be evenly spread across the day. Now, let's break that down just a little more. So an example might be three, two, three, two, three, with the threes being meals and twos being snacks. But like everything else, we can encourage and educate all day, but if they don't want to do what we're telling them, of course, we can't force them. We're here for patient care first and foremost. Of course, we always wanna encourage all our patients to make healthy eating choices, but if a person with diabetes wants cake or pasta, they should be able to have that. They just need to work within the parameters of their own needs. And for goodness sake, if it's their birthday, it's okay if their sugars are a little high that day. They don't need to eat special sugar-free foods, and they don't have to have a special diet. We want people with diabetes to eat a regular, healthy diet, just like the rest of us. Thank you for watching this presentation on The Diabetic Diet Does Not Exist. Please close this presentation and follow the link in your email to the post-test. Section 1 will evaluate what you learned, and Section 2 will review how you felt about the presentation format and content. Thank you again.